feel the burning stare of my hamster and change your ways. Minsk and Boo. A core companion that has appeared throughout the games. He pretty much has the longest running in party time of all companions across the saga, and has been a major fan favorite for ages, even being immortalized as a Funko Pop. On the outset, we meet Minsk and Boo upon arriving in Nashkel in the first game, imprisoned with us at the start of Shadows of Am, and summoned to us by the Fate Spirit within our pocket plane in Throne of Ball. Originally from the country of Rashomon, far to the east of the Sword Coast, just north of Thay, Minsk had set out from his homeland on a quest of Dajima, a coming-of-age tradition for young men amongst his people. He was meant to travel to foreign lands and to understand more of the world. Those who undertook these journeys would sometimes be accompanied by a witch known as a Wicklerin. These witches are the spiritual leaders of Rashomon. In their ancient language, it means wise old women. Their duty is to commune with the spirits and to guide the souls of their people. Danaher is one such witch, and Minsk was expected to serve her faithfully while she also accomplished her own coming-of-age tradition for the Wickler. Minsk's wish upon returning home to his people is to be accepted into the Ice Dragon Berserker Lodge. Prior to us meeting Minsk for the first time, the kind-hearted Berserker warrior had suffered a significant head injury sometime in his past. It was around that time when he discovered and befriended his beloved miniature giant space hamster Boo. It may have seemed odd to those who didn't know him, but to Minsk, Boo is his closest companion, providing wisdom and endless moral support. As we meet Minsk and Nashkel, we learn of his plight to rescue Dinahir from the Null stronghold west of the town. We learned that they were ambushed one evening, Minsk being knocked unconscious and Dinahir swept off into the night. He welcomes us to join him in rescuing his charge. We agree, thus currying Boo's favor and the beginning of a friendship that would transcend all odds to come. Minsk became one of the heroes of Baldur's Gate due to his aid in bringing down Saravok and uncovering the truth behind the Iron Crisis in the region. The ranger, his hamster, and Dinahir traveled with you for a time, along with Jahira, Khalid, and Imuin as well. Until one day, the group was ambushed near the city and captured by John Irenicus. Dinahir was killed during the struggle in front of Minsk. In his failure to protect the young Wutheran, his grip on reality began to loosen, and his dependency on Boo grew ever more. He feared the doors of the Ice Dragon Berserker Lodge would forever remain closed to him now. For fear of Minsk's Berserker rage, your would-be captors welded the doors to his cage shut. After all that you've been through together, the only way to freedom is to invoke his Berserker rage once more. Through harsh words and pseudo-betrayal, you trick him into bending and breaking the bars open. Once free, he realizes what you've done, and with renewed hope, the two of you vow to avenge the fallen, fighting side by side as friends once more. Oh, such a glorious death in battle for Minsk and Boo. We were well on our way to the great fields and holes of Rashomon, but we felt you needing us, so we came. After aiding you in saving Solda and Cellar and defeating Aranicus in Hell, Minsk had finally achieved revenge for Dinahir. He and the rest of the group spend some time apart, living their lives, finding a sense of normalcy once more. It's only after your character gains the pocket plane and begins to call upon old allies does Minsk return. Oh, look who you have found, Boo! With your unerring sense of hamster direction, it is our good friend, a reunion of heroes! <laughs> May all that is evil quiver before us like so much rancid jelly! <laughs> He isn't at all concerned about how he came to be in the pocket plane, and just rationalizes it as Boo bringing the two of them there to team up with you again. All he knows at that moment is that he is reunited with you once more, and he is more than happy to strike down evil. Facing insurmountable odds through the apex of the ball spawn crisis, battling through every manner of powerful magic and monsters, Minsk lives to see victory attained at the foot of Ball's throne with the death of a Melisan. Against all odds, he helped you to attain one last victory, closing the Ballspawn Saga and fulfilling his long-promised oath to his people. He chose to return home to Rashomon, hoping to tell stories of his adventures to the Ice Dragon Berserker Lodge 
and earn a place within its hallowed halls. As it turns out, he didn't need to share his deeds with anyone. He soon discovered that every tavern in Faerun had a bard singing of the valiant ranger and what he had accomplished. He was welcomed home as a hero. He eventually formed his own adventuring company known as the Justice Fist, striking fear into the hearts of evil. After many years and his advancing age, he chose to set out onto the world once more. With only Boo by his side, he disappeared. Until now. We learn that Mint's disappearance was due to being turned to stone under the guise of a merchant commissioning a statue of the beloved ranger to be kept in the market of the city. His story resumes within the D&D comics. The statue stood tall for many more years within the market, until a wild mage named Delina, beset by a pair of gargoyles, lets loose a surge of wild magic in an attempt to defend herself. The magic contorted away from her intended targets and struck the statue, thus freeing Minsk and Boo. We are now a little over a hundred years removed from the Ballspawn Crisis. Upon his freedom, Minsk and Boo become entangled with a plot enacted by the Cult of the Dragon within the city. He befriends three new allies and very briefly reunites with an old ally, Corin. He constantly calls Delina by the name of another old companion, Nira. Seeing as how they are both fair-skinned, white-haired, wild mage elves, the confusion is understandable for him. As we learn of Delina's quest to find her brother, Deniac, two thieves by the names of Cradle and Shandy join the group, initially hired to find information on Delina's brother thus leading to a series of events within the comic to reveal that Cradle is the half-elf son of Corrin, Delina's brother is a mad wizard who formed his own faction within the cult, and Boo is finally seen going for someone's eyes in combat. In the end, the Neak's master plan didn't turn out how he had expected, and he transformed into a red dragon, wreaking havoc on a small portion of the city. Minsk and his newfound companion slew the beast, dealing their final attacks in front of a crowd of onlookers. And just like that, the return of Minsk and Boo is heroically displayed to the people of the city. Minsk and his companions soon find themselves in the service of a temple of Kelimvor within the city. Kelimvor is a deity of the dead who held deep respect for life and death as well as contempt for the undead. The temple priest Albi hires the group to investigate the disturbances happening to the temple at night. After dealing with an attack by a group of lycanthropes and undead, the temple cleric Nerys is kidnapped with Boo hidden on her person. To Minsk's very brief sorrow, Boo returns, revealing the location of the kidnapped cleric. One thing leads to another, and the group, along with Nerys, are whisked away in a massive fog, only to reappear in a demiplane of dread. We know this particular location as Ravenloft in the D&D campaign Curse of Strad. The group briefly finds themselves in a nearby town where a parade is about to commence, only to be interrupted by a gang of lycanthropes and Strahd's undead servants. Minsk and his companions dispatch to the hostile group, ending with a brief betrayal by one of the lycanthropes, only to have her torn apart when Strahd himself appears. With a hard-fought victory in sight, the group was defeated, barely surviving a blast from a massive fireball by Strahd. Instead of finishing off Minsk and his companions, Strad chose to take the very locket that had brought the group there, hoping that its powers would end his curse. But an apparition of Strad's brother stopped him, leading to Delina recovering the locket and wishing with all she had for an escape. They are surrounded by the fog once more, taken far away from Ravenloft. Minsk and his companions find themselves in the frozen north along the spine of the world, over a thousand miles away from the city of Baldur's Gate. Barely even a moment's passing since their injuries at Ravenloft, Minsk carries a severely injured Nerys through the blizzard, his defeat weighing heavily on his mind. With the whole party exhausted and injured, they were beset by a gang of ogres, only to be saved by a new companion who would join them for a time, a golden dragonborn by the name of Sarvan. As we progress through the comic, Minsk and his companions defend a village from a raiding party of ice giants, only to discover a plot by the giants to capture a dragon orb. We learn that giants everywhere have started to forsake their social structure in efforts to gain power. The leader of this group of frost giants wants to use this dragon orb to gain control of white dragons and use them in his force of conquest against other giants. After a series of events, Mintz finds himself stowed away on a longboat headed back to the frost giant's home, his party having every intention of gathering intel to bring back to their allies in Fireshear. 
But of course, things don't always go as planned, and the party ends up surrounded by the entire tribe of Frost Giants. Minsk and his companions put up an amazing fight, but true victory only arrived when Shandy knocked the dragon orb out of the frost giant leader's hands with a well-placed arrow, freeing the surrounding white dragons, and Boo drinking up a spilled magical potion, growing his miniature self to the size of a giant. And thus the day was won. Minsk had regained the status of hero in his mind, and Delina had finished a deal that would have the white dragons not harm humans any further. Upon returning home to Baldur's Gate, Minsk is left alone while his companions each have their own personal stuff to attend to, and this last comic is divided up into sections for each one of them, even one specifically for Boo. Cradle saves Corrin's life and avenges his mother's death, Delina briefly visits Mechanis searching for a way to control her wild magic, and Nerys is cured of her lycanthropy by aid of the whole party. But prior to these incidents, Minsk, bummed about being left alone, goes searching through the city to kick evil butt. He ends up defeating a powerful Oni, who claimed to be a hero while eating humans he deemed to be villains within the lower city. Although the real excitement happens one night when everyone is asleep, Boo finds his way outside onto the roof to enjoy some fresh air, when he happens upon a group who means to do Minsk and his companions harm. Through a series of carefully executed actions, Boo successfully makes a fool of said group by having them beat each other up in their attempt to stop him. It was both heroic and quite hilarious. When the group awakens the next morning, they find the would-be villains tied up outside of their hideout and still visibly shaken by their ordeal. In the end, Minsk will never know what amazing feat Boo had accomplished that night. Minsk and his new companions are currently wrapped up in the ongoing Infernal Tide series with two of the five issues currently available, and so far it looks like it's tied to the events currently happening within Descent into Avernus. This solidifies the timeline, placing Minsk over 100 years past the events of Ballspawn Saga, since the campaign is canonically taking place in 1492. Supposedly, the Neverwinter expansion Elemental Evil that released in April 2015 just one month after the first comic finished, also confirmed him being freed sometime in the 1480s, but I wasn't able to find definite proof on that one. One of the things Larian had talked about in their Reddit AMA recently is that there will be cameos from Murder in Baldur's Gate and Avernus campaigns. Avernus makes sense because it's the current campaign, but why murder? Why pick a short campaign supplement from 2013? Here's why this has me excited. Murder in Baldur's Gate is the key that ties everything together. Both Koran and Blaze Uldir Ravengard take part in this campaign that canonically happens in 1482, and we clearly see them also taking part in Minsk's comic book series as well. That alone solidifies the timeline yet again, and we can safely assume Minsk was freed from petrification sometime around this campaign setting. Larian chose to reiterate in their Gazette from March 5th that the shadows and scars of the past will not stay silent. You will meet and get to know many new characters and encounter some of the legendary characters you know and love. After everything Minsk has accomplished in his life, I think it's safe to say he is a legendary character. And with the evidence we have around his existence in the timeline, not to mention the many years of being the fan favorite, I would be very surprised if Minsk doesn't make it into the new game in some form or another. Thank you to everyone who made it through this journey alongside Minsk. He wouldn't be the great hero he is today without you. I plan on doing more character and lore speculation videos, especially since the evidence found leads to other old companions that might appear in the new game. Hopefully those won't be as long as this one. Minsk just happens to have the longest recorded series of adventures out of everyone. I hope you enjoyed everything, and until next time. I greet you once again, godchild.